since she's part of a prestigious acting family and one of America's most beloved working actresses, you'd be forgiven for thinking that she's had an easy ride. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're taking a look at the heartbreaking life of Drew Barrymore. For this video, we're looking at the early life and career of Drew Barrymore, and how she came out the other side stronger than ever. The Barrymore acting dynasty dates all the way back to the 19th century, with Drew Barrymore's great-grandfather Maurice and his wife Georgiana Emma Drew. Many of the Drews were actors as well. What's in a name? Well, in Barrymore, there's a lot. It's a dynasty, big drinkers and brilliant actors. Her grandfather, John Barrymore, was one of the most renowned Shakespearean actors of the 1920s, and by 1927, the family already had a play written about them, The Royal Family. Even her father, John Drew Barrymore Jr., did a lot of work on TV and was in a handful of movies, though they never took off. Unfortunately, the Barrymores also have a long history of substance problems, specifically alcoholism. Come on, can I get you a glass of milk, honey? Milk? I'm a Barrymore. Get me a drink and make it a double. Both her father and grandfather ultimately died from deteriorating health as a result of long-term alcohol abuse. And because of this, her dad was rarely present in her life. Did I do something wrong that my dad doesn't want to be around me? Am I such a repellent person that I drive everyone who gets to know me to the furthest mountain that they can run to? And um, I still question that sometimes. Her first acting role came when she was only 11 months old, when she appeared in a commercial for Gaines Burgers Dog Food alongside a puppy. And even at this age, she was praised for her performance. Her father was already out of her life after numerous arrests for domestic abuse and drug possession. And by the time she got her big break in E.T., her mother Jade was her primary carer. She landed the role of Gertie after impressing Steven Spielberg in an audition for Poltergeist. Well, first he interviewed me for Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I didn't want to do that movie because it was kind of kind of scary. He didn't feel like she was right for Poltergeist, but made good on his promise to see her for something else. And she ended up giving a winning performance in what became the highest-grossing movie of the 1980s. She was just seven years old during filming, and it was soon after that she asked Spielberg if he would be her godfather, which he accepted. He remained an influential role model throughout her life, even telling her to cover up after she posed for Playboy when she was older. But her sudden rise to fame was bad news. Her mother loved the limelight, and rather than making sure her daughter went through school to get a good education, she started partying and taking Drew with her. You just can't stand that the whole world is going to know the truth about what? About how you've held me back all these years. One of their regular haunts was the famous Studio 54 nightclub in New York, and it was hanging around so many older people that got her into more and more trouble. Well, I had grown up very fast, and it's not very normal to see a nine-year-old at a big Hollywood party drinking. And um, it looks a little weird, and people were laughing and just saying, you know, I dare you to do this, and I did. By age 9, she'd had her first drink of alcohol. By 10, she'd smoked marijuana. And by 12, she was addicted to cocaine. Shockingly, not one of the adults she found herself partying with intervened. She'd already been to rehab more than once during her early adolescence, though she said in a 2015 interview with The Guardian that this was the lowest point in her life. But what about the drugs? That started when I was about 10 and 11, and... Um, 10? It, who gave you your first drug, for goodness sake? Um, as I said then, they were friends, but they weren't really friends. She was 13 when she was institutionalized in a mental facility for 18 months, and traumatic as this was, it gave her the chance to finally get clean. By 1989, she was already speaking to the press about her life to try and help other young people struggling with substance abuse, giving a candid interview to People magazine. It was while she was institutionalized that the medical professionals treating her suggested legal emancipation, so she could get away from the emotional abuse of her mother. Despite only being 14, everyone agreed that she would fare much better on her own than if she was still dependent on her parents. When she was 15, she was back in Hollywood living in a rundown apartment working in the service industry, already a washed-up actress who'd been through it all. After all that, you may think that she's never had anything to do with either of her parents, but this is not the case. Though she was estranged from him for most of her life, she provided a home for her father and paid for all his cancer treatment before his death in 2004. And she still keeps in touch with and maintains a relationship with her mother. I better check on mother and the cat. 
She's a lot of fun. I hope she doesn't die. By 16, she was sober and had already written her first memoir, Little Girl Lost, and was beginning to get into acting again. She had a few roles here and there in the 90s, but didn't see much mainstream success again until she opened her own film company alongside Nancy Juvonen in 1995. Flower Films The first movie Flower Films made was 1999's iconic rom-com Never Been Kissed, starring Barrymore, and they went on to produce giant hits like Charlie's Angels and Donnie Darko. Alas, I have not yet been elected queen of the universe, so I must obey the rules, and so will you. More recently, they were behind Barrymore's three-season Netflix show Santa Clarita Diet. Okay, here's the deal. Mommy's going a little crazy down here, so I need to get out. And I know you're worried I'm going to go out there and kill somebody, but think about all the people I haven't killed. Barrymore has also proven to have a lot of range as an actress, taking on the difficult role of little Edie Beale alongside Jessica Lange in HBO's Grey Gardens, winning a Golden Globe. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. But while her career has been flourishing for decades, her relationships have been a little less consistent. I try really hard. Relationships take a lot of work. Do they ever? Oh my god, family, friends, and lovers. It's. I think it, it, it probably takes most of your energy in this life, but it's so worth it. She was engaged to Leland Hayward, another member of a Hollywood dynasty, when she was 16 in 1991. And just a year later, she was engaged to Jamie Walters. They were two of the most beautiful, physically and really, really adorable people. And I did think they would be a good match, and, um, and they really did hit it off. In addition to rocky relationships with Eric Erlinson, Fabrizio Moretti, and Justin Long, she got married multiple times. After a short-lived matrimony to a bar owner in 1994, she wed comedian Tom Green in 1999, and then in 2012, she married Will Kopelman, with whom she has two daughters. Though they divorced in 2016, her daughters mean the world to her, and she's dedicated to raising them in the happy, loving home she never had. I'm telling you, she's great! And we should all believe our children are right. That's what we're yes, supposed to do with parents. exactly. And then later on, you, you tell them they're nobodies. <laughs> Outside of the acting world, she's also seen success in various business endeavors, bringing out cosmetics, wines, and clothes, not to mention writing another book. Though Drew Barrymore's early life was troubled, it's truly incredible to see how far she's come, what a role model she is today, and how iconic she is both in and out of the entertainment industry. This is definitely a story with a happy ending. Do you feel now that you are finally living the life that you want? Without any question, yes. I am so glad that I get to live the life I have. I love my life. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.